Hello and welcome to the ninth lesson of this course. We're going to be talking about the Python packages Pandas and X-Ray. These two libraries introduce powerful new tools to work with two of the most common data formats in science, CSV files and NetCDF files. There's an accompanying Colab notebook for this lesson, uh, which is linked from Canvas and in the Google Drive. So feel free to follow along and tinker with that code uh, as you watch this video. I'll cover these topics in four segments, two about Pandas and two about X-Ray. The first segment is on the pandas series object type. So first, pandas is a package containing functions we want to use. So we have to load it so Python can access those functions. And just like NumPy, we do that by saying import pandas as the shortcut pd. But what is pandas? Well, the package gets its name from panel data, which is another name for a spreadsheet. And that's what pandas is great at, handling spreadsheets and other forms of tabular data. And for that reason, pandas is essentially synonymous with data science when it comes to Python. Pandas is just incredibly common in, in all sorts of data science work. So while NumPy is built around array objects, the quintessential pandas objects are the series and the data frame. Both of them are like spreadsheets in that they have rows and they have columns. A pandas series object has a single column, which you can give a name, though that's actually optional. The pandas data frame object, on the other hand, generally has multiple columns, and the column names are called labels. Now, behind the scenes, each of these objects stores a NumPy array that we refer to as the data. For a series, the data is one-dimensional. For a data frame, the data is actually two-dimensional. And the data are wrapped in this structure uh, with column labels and row names, and those row names are referred to as the index. So as we know from lists and arrays, uh, the index is really important, right? Because we use the index to access data. An index is like a street address or set of addresses pointing to different buildings on a street. But pandas is different than NumPy. The index of a series or a data frame doesn't have to start from zero and go up to the length of the data minus one. Instead, the index can consist of any values of any single data type like numbers, strings, or date time objects. So we go about constructing a new series object using the function pd.series. And here series has to be capitalized. First, we specify the index, which can be a list or 1D NumPy array, then the data, which should be a list or array of the same length as the index. And optionally, you can give the series a name using the string. So in this example, we created two series, S1 and S2, with five years as the, ind as the uh, indices and corresponding temperature and salinity values as the data. And we've added those names at the end here. Also note that you can get the length of a series using the len function, just like with lists and arrays. So once we've created a series, you might think we could extract the index by writing dot index uh, with the variable name. And that works, but what it gives us is an index object. And it looks like what we want, but it's not actually very useful to us. Instead, we usually want the index converted into the underlying NumPy array. And for that, we say dot index dot values. And that gives us those years as an array that we can work with. Notice the syntax, which we, we, which we read from left to right. We get the index of S1. And then from that, we get the values of the index of S1. You might think we could write just S1 dot data to get the data, but that's not actually correct. Instead, we use dot values to get back the underlying NumPy array for the data. Instead of using normal bracket indexing to get values from a series, we use this funny looking dot iloc brackets syntax, which stands for index location, when we want to select data by position or integer index. And we can use a single index inside the brackets, like three, to get the third element of a series. Or we can use multiple indices in a list or array like dot iloc double brackets two, three, four to select those three indices. Or we can use integer slicing to get the second up to the fifth elements, just like for a list or array. And lastly, we can also use a Boolean array or an expression that evaluates to a Boolean array, similar to NumPy, in this case, false, false, true, true, false. 
But unlike arrays, pandas also gives us the option to select data by label. And for that, we use .loc .lock followed by brackets. And inside the brackets, you can put a single index label. Uh, that might be a number, a string, a date time. In this example, I've written s1.lock brackets 2019 to select the data value corresponding to the year 2019. You can also pass multiple uh, index labels inside a list or array like that. And you can still use slicing, such as this example, 2018 to 2020. But note that when you slice by label rather than by integer index, the end value is inclusive. So this will give the data for years 2018, 2019, and 2020. And just a reminder, if you want the underlying NumPy array rather than just a subset of the original pandas series in pandas format, you have to convert it to NumPy using dot values. OK. We know indexing is useful to retrieve as well as assign values. So of course, we can use pandas indexing with .iloc and .lock to change the data in a series object, not just retrieve it. For instance, s1.lock brackets 2018 equals 5.3 changes the value for 2018 to 5.3. And in this second example, .iloc brackets 3 to 5 changes the third and the fourth element, because it's exclusive at the end, to these new values. And in this third example here, dot lock, brackets, 2018 to 2020, exclus uh, inclusive at the end, sorry, plus equals one. That adds one to the data in 2018, 2019, and 2020. Again, indexing, oops, indexing by label is inclusive at the end. OK. And we actually use the same syntax to add a new value to a panda series. And we do that by specifying a new index label that's not already in the index. For instance, 2021. And here we pass the new value 9.6. And you can see it appears now in the series. Think of this like inserting an item into a list. In both cases, you have to specify where the value goes. OK, that's it for this lesson. See you in the next one.